the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Well, this is our last service before Christmas, and uh, we'll be um, not having service this Sunday morning, but you never know. We might even hit a Mevo special thing uh, from, the, from from a fireside chat. It would be a real fireside chat if we did that, because right in front of the fireplace. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you don't should love those fireside chats where there's no fireplace. <laughs> you know. Okay. okay, so it's a throwback to the 40s and radio, right? Yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God. So um, I, I, am, I am considering doing that, so we'll, we'll see. And so we'll just, you know, you'll, you'll show up in your feed that we're up. And um, Lord, hallelujah. And somebody else say? Flash sermon, that's right. We'll, we'll do a flash sermon. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been teaching, on, we have been, and we're going to go ahead and jump in. And I thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we've been teaching on tithing, on the doctrine of tithing, and uh, our foundation text was Jesus, Matthew 23, 23, and um, I guess we'll just put that up as our, this, so we'll have this up here, Matthew 23, 23, okay, that is a horrid, 
Come in and say, that's just plum hard. You know, horrible would be what we Americans would say or nasty or something. The Brits would say horrid. So, and I just sometimes that word horrid carries just a stronger <laughs> implication. All right. But Jesus said in Matthew 23, 23, 23, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not leave the other undone. What he said there was this. You know, you think you're really cool because you're tithing on these things, but you've left out judgment and mercy and faith. Then he, then he followed it up just for the modern-day church so they wouldn't be able to come and say something they, he didn't say. He said, you ought to have done those. You should have tithed, but you shouldn't have left those others undone. It was hypocritical to think that you were uh, all right and great because you were tithing, but you weren't giving, the, you know, you weren't, judge, you were, you weren't uh, judgment in, in a godly way. You weren't giving mercy. You weren't giving, you're operating in faith. He said that that was hypocritical of them. And anybody, he proceeded to say, I didn't want you to not stop. I didn't want you to stop tithing. You should have been doing that, but you should have been doing the other also. So we get from that, and we, I bring that up and use it as a foundation text on tithing because a lot of people come along and say, I don't believe in tithing. It's, it's not New Testament. And we went on, we talked about how that, um, you know, 430 years before the law of tithe, Abraham tithed the milk of the deck. And we talked about in that first couple of weeks of this that um, Abraham tithing to Melchizedek was the tithe of faith. That the law, which is added 430 years, was the tithe to the Levi, which is a lot. We were tithing because it requires us tithing because it's necessary, because God demands it. We tithe like Abraham did, Melchizedek. Okay? And so um, it is important. Are we on? Okay. It is important to remember that so under the new covenant, we tithe out of faith. We're not tithers of the law, we're tithers of faith, okay? Or faith tithers instead of law tithers. So we talked about, then we talked, we did go, and we talked about, I believe, last week and, and, and maybe part of the week before, how that studying tithing under the law helps us see God's desire and God's wants about how we handle our money, okay? That tithing is the means by which he is able to bless us. We said, you know, where you robbed me in tithing, offerings well what, what gets robbed when people don't tithe and give offerings is the work of god and see the heart of god is the heart of god is to reach nations the heart of god is to get that job done and he has his ministers to get that job done it requires the tithe and offering to get that done okay you know you money grab and preach you want is our money well it takes money to, to do what god called us to do it takes money for jesus's ministry jesus well, you know, they talked about how Jesus was, you know, uh, Jesus didn't have anything. I mean, he had to, you know, he didn't even have a house or a bed. He had so much money, he had to have a treasurer. And I like to say this, you, I, I, I guarantee you, you can go down here to the interstate uh, with all the guys who had the signs out there, go down by the Salvation Army or by the urban ministries down there, and not one of those guys has a treasurer because they ain't got no money, Okay. Jesus had so much money in one place that he, they, they knew he could buy food for five, all, all the people that were there, 5,000 plus men, women, and children. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, 15 to 20,000, he had, there was enough to buy food for all of them. It just wasn't close enough. You study it and look at it, and you'll see it, it, it's not close enough to go buy. There was enough money in the, in, the, um, in the coffers of the ministry to take care of all those people. But he didn't do it because they were too far away. And so he worked a miracle there on that point. And so um, you just have to look at things a little bit closer and um, not be so whatever. So we, we do see that God wanted to tithe. He said you're robbing him when you don't tithe, and you're robbing him of two things. One, the money to run, his ministry, to run the church, to take care of the kingdom of God. And two, um, of his ability to bless you in accordance with what you sow. Okay? He gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater, multiplies your seed some and increases the fruits of your righteousness okay we have to bring that first fruits back to him and, and bless the kingdom of god and so we talked about the you know the purposes of tithing was for the levites the tithe the tithe for the priests that was every, you know, the, the uh, because the levites didn't have an inheritance with the children of israel the 11 tribes got all the land levi was to live the tribe of levi was to live a tithe of all the people and then the levites were to tithe a 10 percent to the priest 
See, not everybody that was a Levite was a priest. They were all out of that, all out of that tribe, but they weren't priests. And so they all lived off of that because they were caretakers of the temple and all the things around the temple, but they didn't all, all, weren't all priests. And so then the priests were, as the Bible says in the New Testament, they're worthy of double honor. So they got tithe, and they got a tithe of the tithe. Okay? All right? That's what the New Testament says. They're worthy of, the, the labor is worthy of higher, <clears throat> especially those who are worthy you know, labor more than deep. They're worthy of double honor. So we're, you know, God wanted to bless them doubly. Then talk about the tithe of the tithes every three years for the poor and the uh, need, uh, needy. So there was an extra tithe taken out of the tithe every three years to take care of poor and needy and ministers in the different towns. So God had a financial plan to sustain everything. He didn't need the government. It was the church that was going to do it. If everybody that was in a church in this country tithed like this, we wouldn't have homeless problems. We wouldn't have, because the church would be taking care of instead of a government agency or government regulation, they would be feeding them and teaching them how to fish <clears throat> and blessing their lives. Okay? And then, you know, of course, four of this was to supply God's house, um, to, and, and, you know, because it takes money for the church, and then to honor God, okay? And we talked, when it was brought, it was brought yearly. We talked about those different things. Then we talked about it was belonged to God, the people who paid them. It wasn't yours to start with. It was his. And where were they brought? They were brought to the temple, okay, and uh, to, the, you know, to the house of God. And so, um, and then if you borrowed it, it was a 20 surcharge. God wanted to make it so unprofitable not to tithe that it was, it was just better to go ahead and tithe. So he could bless you. All right? And, um, and so then we're kind of here at the end of this, and we're kind of just kind of wrapping this up. You know, it's not going to be very, very long tonight. But Jesus taught it. All right? Tithing in the New Testament, Jesus taught it. I mean, how much more, can, uh, whatever can you get than Jesus teaching it? You know? Well, I just don't believe, well, the Master taught it. The church taught it. The Lord Jesus Christ himself taught it. Amen? All right. And so in the New Testament, we, we find, of course, our, our main text again, Matthew 23, 23. Jesus said that you tithe. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you tithe on the tithe, on the, tithe, on the uh, cumin, the, the anise, um, and, and so forth. But, and you admitted the weightier matters of the law. And so Jesus taught tithing. Um, he, 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 um, this is quoted again over in Luke eleven forty two. Uh, that you tie the mint and rue and all manners of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God these ought to have done and not left the other undone. So Luke words it a little bit differently. Okay? And, um, and then let's look over in Luke 16, 16. Because there's something I want to make a point here. Let's we'll look at verse 14. We'll just start in Luke uh, 6 and... Okay, all right. He says here, um, and the Pharisees also who were covered heard all these things, and were and, der and they derided him, and they said, "Ye are the." Uh, and he said unto them, the Pharisees, "Ye are they which justify themselves before men, but no God knoweth the hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abominable, is an abomination in the in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached." And every man presseth into it. So, um, that, you know, until John, and this makes my point, remember? Because somebody will say, well, Jesus said that, but that was an Old Testament ministry. But what Jesus said is, uh, you know, until John was the law and the prophets. Law. Said, but now the kingdom of God's preached. Why is that important? Because he said, you should tithe. <laughs> right? He's saying the law was until John. Now the kingdom of God's preached. And he preached tithing. He is a, is a kingdom of God principle. Okay? Now, there are certain things that he was teaching, you know, that, that were relative um, under, under certain, you know, things like, um, 
um, being born again when, and all that, that, the spirit coming and the church being established. But he's saying that the law and the prophets, the, the, the rules of the law lasted until John. Okay? So all the constraints. Because remember, Jesus would say things like this. You know, he would make statements like this. Um, you know, it's written in the law, you know, to, to love, to hate thy neighbor or, or you know, um, what, how did he say it? How did he say it? Come on. Somebody that, you know, oh, 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 um, how, did you render back and forth? You, you know, if, if somebody does it, you render evil for you. you, know, you make. But he says this, but I say it to you, do good to them that despitefully use you. Okay? See, law was you got retribution for what you did wrong. And Jesus said, it's written you know, this, but I say. Why? Well, because he's now preaching the kingdom of God. Okay? The law and the prophets were until John. John was the last of the Old Testament preachers, as it were. Jesus came. There's this transition in his ministry between, he, there were certain things he had to fulfill. I understand he was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. He had to be offered up as the, by the high priest as our sacrifice. Yet the things he was teaching and preaching were becoming the kingdom of God. So when Jesus, the, the, the law and the prophets were until John, and then he came back and he taught, Tithing. He was teaching tithing as what? As part of the new creation or the new kingdom or the kingdom of God that's coming. You can't just say it was Old Testament. And when Jesus was talking about it, he was talking about Old Testament. Okay? That's not how he did it. Okay? Uh, excuse me. And so because of that, we can look at the ministry of Jesus when he teaches on tithing and saying tithing you should have done then we should be tithers. I mean, okay? And, and, and this, just because it, it's, he said it was a New Testament principle. Now, let's go back to a scripture we had way earlier in this teaching, and we're going to kind of just, I'm trying to wrap this up now. Um, back to Hebrews chapter 7. We won't read, maybe I won't quite read all of this. this. But I do want to get a good hunk of it. It's okay to cover ground. I heard Dad Hagen teach um, and start our faith library class every time he taught with Mark 11, 23, 24. <laughs> or 22, 23, 24. All right? But uh, chapter 7. Um, where did that go? 11. Okay. I'm not hitting my scripture right off the bat here, so let me let me look it up. Uh, I'll get it. Stay with me, guys, uh, out there on, on the ether world. Stay with me just a second. Hallelujah. Um, I will. I will get it. Up. Oh. Hallelujah. I didn't write this down. I should written it down so I'm going to find it of course you spell it correctly it helps Huh? Yep, yep, verse 8. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I just didn't see it. Okay. Um, now consider how great this man was, and to him even, verse 4, patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And verily, they that are the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of other people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, that though they came out of the loins of Abraham. Um, but he whose descent is not counted from them that received the tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without contradiction, without contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here, here, men that die receive tithes. 
But there he received them of whom it is written that he liveth. <laughs> so here, men that die receive tithes. But there, of whom it is written, or whom is witness, he liveth, he receiveth them. He receives tithes now. He's receiving now. And so, Jesus taught tithing. Jesus said it was not just in the Old Testament. As, it was, as we showed before, it's a pre-Abraham or pre-law event. It's a law event or a, a law action. And it's a post-law action. It is a church action. And so it, we go through the gamut of Scripture and we find tithing has just existed throughout Scripture to then come back in because you don't Believe, don't want to believe in or for some selfish reason you know and listen, i know some people struggle with, you know you know you got to get in faith to things you can't tie that out of faith if you're not in faith then you get in faith okay and um but you come back okay well that because the law talks about it it's law we don't have to do that because we're free from the law but the thing is it exists before that's like kind of saying you know um um I don't know, because god's in the law you don't have to worship God because it's law. We're free from the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and the neighbor is yourself. You know, that's how the, he read the law. Yet, we know that loving God existed before, during, and after the law. We can't just kind of cut things up because we come up with a narrative that doesn't line up with the whole Bible. Okay? We find out that tithing was before, tithing was during, and tithing was after because it was always it wasn't something that just existed during the law more information we got much more insight we got a whole lot more uh, detail under the law about it excuse me but we did not get the beginning or the end of tithing under the law it preceded and after okay and so when jesus came and taught this he was teaching the kingdom of god he said you know um up i'm the law and prophets now uh, i'm the kingdom of god is preached and you know you we're to embrace that we're to receive that and his teachings were pointing towards the kingdom of god um he kept talking about loving your neighbor he kept um talking about um if, if the if they slap you once you turn the other cheek if they uh, want your coat, your cloak also. If they bid you, a Roman soldier could make them come and carry their gear for a mile. If they bid you walk one, take and go two. Okay? Now, under the law, see, under the law, you're required to do certain things, only those certain things, and that was all you had to do. And so people live, we even get this term, the letter of the law. People live according to the letter of the law. They ain't going to do no more, no less. Not going to do any less because they don't want to get punished for it, but they're not going to do any more either. They're going to meet the basic requirements. Have you ever done that in life? You know, um, I'm going to meet the basic requirements. Of that's all you're going to get out of me, pal. But see, the church is different. We're not basic requirement people. You know, this is where some of the narrative on uh, grace got off. And that grace is not off. Grace is, is God. There's so many things that are said, if they're said in the proper context, are, s are right spot on accurate. But when you take them and put them into a different context, Okay, then they become inaccurate. You know, in other words, you've changed the parameters of the meaning of it by changing the context around it. Okay, um, God, God loves you. His love is unfailing towards you. Uh, he will never leave you nor forsake you. But take that out and go, and go, and it doesn't matter what I do. You know, I can go do anything I want to, and it's still going to work for me. Is a mis misapplication of that truth. That is so true, you know. And what did Jesus say? You know, how how were you to love to the young, young rich ruler? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Um, you've well said. The one thing you lack is go sell all you have, give to the poor, and take up your cross and follow me. Okay. Jesus did not say, "Go do whatever you want to do." He said, "Take up your cross and follow me." What? Deny yourself and take up my way of doing things. Okay? You're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. And your neighbor is yourself. And give yourself 
holy to God. Okay? Now that narrative of God's unfailing grace, God's marvelous grace, takes on a different takes on the proper context because you're pursuing God with your heart. Does that mean you won't mess up? Does that mean that if you do mess up, he's not he's gonna boot you out. What it does mean is the this grace is working in you as you pursue him in a way. To come back again in the face of God and say, or well, not really getting in the face of God, but it really is. You know, telling people, Man, I don't matter, I can go fornicate and be drunk, I can do whatever I want to do, and it just doesn't matter. God's gonna bless me anyway, because his grace is that good. Now you've taken and you've created a false narrative with same subject, same statements about that God loves you. You can't, you can't have him not love you. You can't you know, have him forsake you that way. But the whole thing is it won't work. Okay? And so when we change the parameter and the narrative, we lose insight into what God really wanted. When we change the parameter of, law, of tithing to a required thing that God wants your money and it's just not fair we've lost what the scripture says about tithing and if you tithe only because you're going to get a, a hundredfold or whatever you know uh narrative of the belief system of giving and tithing you get you know ten thousand percent i'm god i don't have supernatural debt cancellation we, we used to say that too we go there are suddenlies in the kingdom of god and a lot of times I suddenly, yeah, but when I studied, I got to study that one time because the Lord talked to me. He said, how long did that suddenly take? Book of Acts. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rush and wind. And I go back and think, well, Malachi, you know, we go back to Malachi, the last Old Testament prophet. We go back to the scriptures that talks about him writing the law in our heart, Isaiah and that kind of thing. Uh, over 1,500 years, that suddenly was in the making. Okay. And um, but we know that we go to one prosperity meeting and, you know, give an offering and to the preacher and stuff in his coat pocket. And then we're going to come out and we're going to have a suddenly and have our house paid off. And we see God does work in what seemingly a sudden, sudden things. But the principles that got you to the suddenly are still principles of tithing and sowing and reaping. OK, and so we can't just, you know, can't change the narrative of things. And so. Because people want to change the narrative of tithing an Old Testament practice only for the law, they miss the fact that God, that tithe of worshiping and honoring him with the first fruits of the tenth and then the first fruits of our increase and offerings, bringing that to him as an act of love and honor. Okay? Um, we lose that. We lose sight of that. People, people go out and they start saying things. And, and um, you know, quite frankly, Sometimes when we're we're just young and dumb, we just need to keep our mouth shut because we don't know what we're talking about. One guy, I said, you don't know your head from a hole in the ground. He said, I can prove it. He said, how? And I took my finger on the ground and I put a hole there. I said, that's a hole in the ground. I said, that's your head and that's a hole in the ground. Now, which one's your head? And he pointed to the one in the middle. I said, no, that's a hole in the ground. <laughs> uh, so you don't know your head from a hole in the ground. All right. Okay, so I set him up. Oh, well. <coughs> made my point. When we understand Jesus taught tithing, and that the reason for the tithe was to put us into God's financial plan, <coughs> we're in the financial plan of God, it takes care of his work, then God, it, it becomes a, a, a <coughs> cyclic thing. Okay? We're blessed, we tithe. King of God's taken care of, reached, expand. We're blessed, we tithe. The kingdom of God has expanded. More people come in. More people are blessed. More people are tired. More the kingdom of God has expanded. What's the whole new thing? To reach the world and get as many in the kingdom as we can and populate heaven. Glory to God. And so that, that whole purpose becomes reaching humanity with the heart of God. Amen? And so um, we're going to stop right here because we're done. I, did, I was... I was quite enough time to finish it last week we were kind of close but i couldn't finish so when you come this week this gives us you know uh next wednesday we're not here folks we're, we're christmas day and or christmas uh, day, and then next wednesday we're not having services uh here and so uh we'll pick back new year's but we'll come up in a couple weeks we'll pick up on a new, new year's i mean a new wednesday night uh team as we just kind of see what the lord have us to teach over the over the next couple weeks and um move into that however
we just want to thank you all for, for being faithful to the church. Uh, I got, I got the, the faithful crowd here tonight. Some of you couldn't make it, and we love you all, but those that are here, we love you. Thank you for being here, and uh, we just want you to be blessed. Have a wonderful, prosperous uh, New Year, but I want a merry and blessed Christmas. And remember, Christmas comes from, um, you know, really comes from the Catholic ter you know, term of a mass. And it was the Christ Mass. A mass meant celebration. So, you know, when people, you know, you hear people saying, I'm going to mass, they're going to a celebration. It's supposed to be going to a celebration, okay? And if it's done in Latin, I don't know how they can celebrate. They have no idea what's being said. But anyway, but, it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you go back and study your church history, the reason they used stained glass windows was so the people could understand what they couldn't get out of, the, out of, the, out of the, the Latin, okay? But the Christ, the Christ Mass, which is where we get the word Christmas from, okay? So have a blessed and wonderful time in the celebration of Christ. Hallelujah. His birth, his ministry, his resurrection, his ascension, and his present-day ministry as our high priest and intercessor. Uh, in the earth today. So just have a wonderful time with your family. Keep Jesus in the middle. Remember, he's the reason for the season. Amen. And uh, glory to God. And just have a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. Uh, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We'll see you um, on the 31st for sure. And until then, be blessed. Amen. God bless you.